All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back. So today we are going to be looking at a really powerful test uh, for series convergence called the ratio test. Uh, this is one that we will use a lot going forward, um, especially in some of the applications to series that we'll be looking at in the, the days and weeks to come. Uh, goals for this video are just to introduce the ratio test, uh, work through an example or two, and talk about its strengths and weaknesses, right? So when is it really good? And when does it fail to tell us anything meaningful? Okay, so let's talk about the ratio test. Um, it is going to be for a series, and notice the way that we have this originally described. It's a sum as n uh, goes from some starting point m to infinity. Uh, so it's already a little general in that it does not need to start at zero um, or at one. It can start at any value. Uh, we can determine the convergence or divergence of the series by looking at the following ratios, specifically the limit of the ratios of a sub n plus one divided by a sub n. So in other words, in our series, we can take this ratio where you take uh, a term in the denominator and its subsequent terms, so the next term in the numerator, you can look at this ratio of subsequent terms absolute value, and then take the limit as n goes to infinity. And the result will often be uh, some number L, and then we get the following results. So if limit as n goes to infinity of that ratio is equal to a number L that is less than one, then our series a sub n is known to converge. And not only does it converge, it converges absolutely. So the corresponding sequence of absolute values. Uh, on the other hand, if the limit of this, these terms, if this limit L is greater than one or equal to infinity, then the series a sub n diverges, right? So this is uh, two really strong results that we can draw. Uh, we either converge absolutely or we diverge. Uh, however, if the limit is actually equal to one, so if that limit value L is equal to one, the ratio test is completely inconclusive. We cannot draw any conclusions at all. Okay, so let's see the ratio test in action, right? And I'm gonna look at these two different series. Uh, first, we have the series as n goes from one to infinity of two to the n divided by n factorial, right? And just as a quick reminder off here to the side, that factorial, right? So that n factorial, was equal to n times n minus one times n minus two times, oh, move me out of the way, times dot, 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 times three times two times one, right? So it was just every number from n, uh, integer n, multiplied by all of the smaller digits of n, right? So uh, I probably said that incorrectly, multiplied by all of the smaller uh, integers, or uh, the smaller natural numbers, uh, less than or equal to n. So as an example, five factorial is just five times four times three times two times one. Uh, and what is that equal to? That's equal to 120, I believe. So five factorial is equal to 120 because that is five times four times three times two times one. Notice kind of a cool thing, uh, five factorial is really equal to five times four times three times two times one. Uh, so that's really five times four factorial, right? I can just sort of artificially identify four, three, two, one as four factorial. Uh, and in general, we are going to see that n plus one factorial, right, is going to be, what is that? That's gonna be n plus one times n times n minus one, times dot, 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 all the way down to one. But notice, right, n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down to one, that's just n factorial. And so in fact, n plus one factorial is nothing more than n plus one times n factorial. So there's this interesting relationship between n factorial and n plus one factorial um, that will come in handy. So uh, getting back to the actual example though, let's point out that, or let's try to use the ratio test to figure out what this would be. So I'm going to take uh, this expression, two to the n over n factorial, 
that's my a sub n. And so when I set up my ratio, I'm going to be looking at the ratio where a sub n is in the denominator. So that's 2 to the n divided by n factorial. Uh, and then in the numerator, it's going to be the n plus 1th uh, term, right? So that will be 2 to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. All right, and then our goal is to slap on some absolute values and take the limit of this as n goes to infinity. Okay, so we're going to do that. Um, let's rewrite, right? We have a sort of fraction within a fraction here. So this will become, uh, we'll keep that limit out front. Right, uh, this will become a 2 to the n plus 1 divided by 2 to the n uh, times, and then notice what we have is we have this n plus 1 factorial is in the denominator of the numerator. Uh, well, this n factorial is in the denominator of the denominator, right? So by algebra, we can rewrite this as n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial, right? And then absolute value signs on top of all that. Uh, now, this is fantastic because we can actually simplify these expressions. 2 to the n plus 1 divided by 2 to the n is just going to be 2, right? There's just one extra copy of 2 that's left over. Um, and so if I set up my framework again, that first expression is just going to be a 2 times. And now the n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial, what we saw over here that n plus 1 factorial was equal to n plus 1 times n factorial, right? And so if we sort of take this relationship here, and we manipulate that, we're going to get uh, that n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial is equal to 1 over n plus 1, right? All of the other terms, the n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, dot, 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 uh, those will just cancel out. So n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial equals 1 over n plus 1. Uh, so that's awesome. So we get here, this is 2 times 1 over n plus 1. And as n goes to infinity, right, let's think about this, uh, the 2 remains a constant, the n in the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and so that whole fraction gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so this limit ends up equaling uh, zero. And so because the limit equals zero, and that limit specifically is less than one, we know that this initial series converges. Right? And so we're able to conclude that this initial series converges. Awesome. Okay, love it. And this example really highlights some of the strengths of the ratio test. The ratio test works really, really well when you have um, these exponential expressions like 2 to the n, uh, and it works really, really well with factorials. So we have like an n factorial here. Um, they work really well specifically because we have these kind of relationships um, in which things factor nicely when I take the n plus 1th term and divide it by the nth term, right? So there's a lot of excellent factoring, a lot of excellent canceling there. Um, and so that's, that's one of the real strengths of the ratio. Uh, to see some of the weaknesses, let's take a look at the second example, right? So the second example is the example of uh, negative 1 to the k minus 1 times 1 over k. Um, now, you and I know that this is the alternating harmonic series, right? 1 over k and the, you know, plus minus plus minus introduced by the negative 1. So we know that this series will converge. Um, however, it will only converge conditionally. Let's see what happens when we try to introduce the um, ratio test in this case. Right, so by the ratio test, I would take the nth term, in this case, I guess the kth term, so that's negative one to the k minus one uh, times one over k. And then in the numerator, we would get the k plus one-th term. So that's negative 1 to the k minus 1 plus 1 times 1 over k plus 1. 
we throw in some absolute values and we would take the limit of this as k goes to infinity. Um, and now notice the negative, you know, the alternating aspect of the alternating series, uh, that will get ignored, right? In the absolute value, both of those will just become a positive one. And so this really becomes the limit as k goes to infinity of k divided by k plus one, right? When the, uh, when the algebraic dust settles, that k plus one will be in the denominator and that k will end up in the numerator. So we end up with this expression here. And as k goes to infinity, right, this is just going to go to exactly one. And so the ratio test ends up being completely inconclusive in this case. And that's not surprising. This was a series that we knew converged conditionally, right? It converged, but it did not converge absolutely. The absolute value signs would make it the harmonic series, which would diverge. So this converges conditionally. And in fact, if we go back a slide, notice that the ratio test cannot draw a conclusion of conditional convergence. It can only ever draw the conclusion of converging absolutely or diverging. So if we ever have an example where a, uh, uh, where a series converges conditionally, that will be an example where the ratio test will prove inconclusive, um, which is kind of interesting. It means any absolutely, uh, or any conditionally convergent series will be sort of uh, swept up in this third bullet point right there. So that is a limitation, major limitation of the ratio test. However, outside of that, the ratio test is a really excellent test and one that we will use a lot going forward. So have a, uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you in the next video.